Psalm 91, Preservation Prayer. I welcome you as we continue into Season 7 of 150 Days of Psalms. Season 7. Season 7 meaning we have been doing this, this being the seventh time by the grace of God, and it's a wonderful moment. This seventh season has been a season of rest. The other seasons we were doing day one, day two, day three, day four, all the way to day 150. But in season seven, the Lord gave us a different strategy of enabling us to minister from a place of rest. What a joy to be able to come into his presence and to glorify the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. There's a song that I would like to just bring to your attention that starts with these words. It says, Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Hallelujah. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Now I'm sure the singers in this place will know how to sing better than I can. But everything that has breath should praise the Lord. Psalm 91. We commence by a prayer of Psalm 119 verse 18. It says, Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fuller snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampant. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm shall befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Beloved, this is the preservation prayer in Psalm 91. This scripture it starts by saying that he who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That the place of dwelling is the place, is the wonderful place of being in the secret place. Being in the secret place, being in the place of hiding, the place where we are hidden, the place where we are having communion with God on a very personal level. That it's in these moments that when we are trusting God for His faithfulness and for His mercy, that we are able to experience the supernatural. We are able to experience the blessings, the favor, the joy, the increase. He says in verse 11, which, if you can remember very well, Psalm 91, 11 is a scripture that even the devil knows too well. He knows it too well. He says that he will command his angels concerning you. He was, when Jesus was being tempted 
by of the devil after he had taken up he had he was taken he was up in the in the in the in the in the place of testing in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4 verse 6 you know the enemy came to him and he says if you are the son of god he said throw yourself down for it is written <laughs> satan quotes the scripture don't forget this he can appear as an angel of light he showed up and he said he will command his angels concerning you and he will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. This is the tempter quoting scripture to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ did not say, okay, let's make this happen. No, 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 no. The Lord Jesus Christ was covered in a garment of humility. He was covered in a garment of, you know, he could not allow himself to test the Lord his God. In as much as he was very nature God, he did not want to impress mankind with supernatural activities. But on the last day, when he came upon the earth, after 40 days, he did something supernatural with his body. He was lifted, taken up in front of them without a crane, without anything lifting him. Jesus ascended, literally. In his physical body, he ascended up into the heavens. And the angels say to the people, This same Jesus that you've seen taken up is the one that you dealt with every single day. Jesus, when on earth, had the capacity to operate in the supernatural. He had the capacity to pass through the wall, but he did not. He had the capacity to appear everywhere he wants, but he did not. It was until the resurrection that when the disciples were in a room praying, he appeared in their midst. After the assignment was complete, in the very body of Christ, he appeared again to the disciples and to Thomas, called Didymus, the one who, taught, the one who doubted, who later we are told he went into India. He went and touched the very spots where the Lord Jesus Christ had been nailed to the cross. He said that if you are the son of God, let me touch you. Let me touch the side. This kind of faith is the one we call the Thomas faith. There is also another type of faith that we see in the book of Genesis, the faith of Abraham. There are two types of faith. You need to check on yourself. As we come into this preservation prayer, we need to check on ourselves, what kind of faith do you exercise? Do you exercise the faith of Thomas, who doubted until he saw, or do you exercise the faith of Abraham, who believed God, that he was going to a city whose builder was the Lord? He did not know anything about where he was going. But Abraham believed God, and it was considered as righteousness for him. Beloved of God, it's a joy and great delight to see what God is able to do when the children of God call upon his name. Thomas, also called Didymus, displays a type of faith that even when we have such a powerful prayer as Psalm 91, there are moments when we want to see, we want to touch, we want to believe. Jesus, are you there? Are you there? Are you helping me? Are you healing me? And we ought to come to the place like Abraham, or how the Jewish call it Abraham. That we come to the, the faith of Abraham. That we need to come to that faith of believing without seeing. I usually joke with my friends and tell them. Actually, I don't joke. I tell them the reality. That my going to Israel will not be going to see so that to believe. I believe without seeing. I don't have to go to the Jordan River to believe Jesus went there. I don't have to go to Mount Carmel, to say this is where Elijah was taken up? No. I don't need to go. That's where Elijah prayed and, you know, the rain came. I don't need to see anything to believe. This is the kind of faith that brings us to the preservation prayer. The preservation prayer of Psalm 91 operates in the place of secrecy. The book of John, chapter number 7. I don't know uh, the verse, <laughs> like I always tell you, 
It's good to know the book and then to get the verse as you study. But I know, I believe it's the first four, five, six, seven verses there. The Lord Jesus Christ, it was about the, the time of the Feast of Tabernacles for the Jews. Just like now, we have just uh, come to, you know, as I record this today, the 25th of September, at 6 p.m. today, sunset, is going to be the end of the most sacred and the most holy time of the Jewish people called as Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is a time of prayer and fasting for the Jewish nation as they look to God to help them and to have confirmation that their names are written in the Book of Life. You and I, who are born again, born of the Spirit, born of water, we do not have to worry about our names being on the Book of Life because in Christ Jesus, we have found redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. Hallelujah. What a joy to be able to just have the living water bubbling out of us, flowing out of us, willingly out of us. Beloved, as I bring this message to you, I encourage you, you who have received greatly, you who have known great things from the word of God, that you ought to exercise the things that you have learned and to stay away from the practices of the Nicolaitans. We read in the scriptures in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 6 where the Lord Jesus Christ says that I have this in your favor, that you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. This is in Revelation 2 verse 6. We notice that our Lord Jesus Christ described the Nicolaitans. Who are the Nicolaitans? We read in the book of Acts that when they were talking about the different deacons that came up, one of them was Nicholas. Nicholas. And this man continued. He was, an, he was, a, he was a deacon that had gone out of the way. He is the father of the clerical order. Archbishop, bishop, what, 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 those names? Nicolaitans. When you look at the pattern of the apostles... The way we have these days, you know, a podium and then people sitting the other side, that was not the intention of God. The intention of God was not that so that we go through another man to pray for us, for God. Not so that we pray through some articles, something. We need to touch something so that we can pray, for we can touch God. No, no, no. There is only one mediator between God and man. The man, the Lord Jesus Christ. That also in Timothy. I wanted to dig it and find it out. You know, many times as believers, we are given scriptures and spoon fed. Actually, we de don't take time to open the Bible for ourselves. You know, because, you know, the scriptures are there. The slideshows are there. You're going to get all the scriptures. You're going to get all the verses downloaded to you. And you have nothing but to show a big pamphlet of knowledge that you are not exercising. One joy that I see God has given the people of God that have not received so much knowledge, yet they have grown so much in faith. E, for example, the people in the uh, tropical forests, there are no books in some of those places. But there is a sense of fear of God in those people that they will even rescue they will rescue somebody they don't know rather than kill him. Why? Because in them, there is a fear of God that tells them you shall not kill. You see these things. The preservation prayer of Psalm 91 brings us to a closer communion with God. He who dwells is a place that you need to come to regularly. Is a place that you need to know that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. It's a beautiful knowledge. It's an area of preservation. It's an area of knowledge. It's an area of trusting God. It's an area of waiting upon the Lord and waiting upon His mercy and His grace. John chapter 7. The Lord went into the, into the, into the feasts in secret. John chapter seven. It says that the Lord went into the feast in secret. The reason why he went into the feast in secret is because his time had not yet come. John chapter seven. Look at it. 
beautiful book. Hallelujah. Wonderful chapter that it gives us knowledge, ability, capacity to be able to know that if the King of Kings and Lord of Lords was operating from a secret place, who are we? That at times we just want everything publicized, everything public, everything. There are times when you must do something in the secret place. There are times you are going to take a fast that is not going to be public. Nobody's going to know you're fasting. Indeed, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, it gives us the capacity of how to do that kind of a fasting. It says that even put some ointment on your face, clean up a bit, let people know that you are doing well. And yet you are in the place of fasting. They should not know you are fasting. In fact, this does not call for, you know, being completely fanatical in how you are doing things that is a sin to tell somebody you are fasting. No. Choose your fast well so that you don't have to explain yourself. There are some fasts that you do that you don't need anybody to know you are fasting. So avoid visiting people during that time. Avoid being in restaurants at that time. There's no point of you going to a restaurant and then when you sit in there, you tell the person who is next to you, you say, I'm not taking anything today. You say, why? Hey, I'm fasting. It is not proper for you to position yourself in a place of openly displaying what you're doing. When God desires that you do something supernatural for him and with him, he takes you to a place that is called, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The people will come to learn of it later that you are fasting. The people will come to see the results and they cannot argue with them because results do not need to be argued. Just the same way the sun rises on the east and it goes all the way to the west. It's a joy and privilege to dwell in the presence of God. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That there is you know, the Lord is our rock and our defense. So when it says to us that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, it means that there's a rock. Hallelujah. And the light of God gives you the shadow. Ha! It says that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That it is in himself. That we find the shadow. It's in the Lord that we find the shadow. It's in his goodness that we find the shadow. One thing I want to tell you, beloved of God, expect good things from the Lord. Expect in the tough economic times. Even in the people in the first world, they are experiencing tough economic times. The same way the people in the third world, they are experiencing tough economic times. Even the donors, the donor countries, the ones that were busy making big and huge donations into Africa and the continent of Asia, now they are struggling and looking for ways why they should justify their giving. But he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will remain well provided for. He will remain covered and healed. The word of God says, I will say of the Lord. This kind of a location requires you to have an Abraham kind of a faith. A faith that believes without seeing. When God spoke to Abraham, an a, a 75 year old man that time, he said, I will bless you with the son. It took 25, 24 years, 99 is when this man got a baby. Can you imagine that? Abraham believed God, and it was considered to him as righteousness. Abraham, that kind of faith is still being required of us today, that we need to believe God, even though we don't see anything, we need to believe. Even if we don't feel anything, we need to believe that the preservation God, the God that preserves, will preserve our souls. It says that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This is the truth of the thing, the truth of the matter. We need to know that the altar of the lion and the lamb is established. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. That we begin to see the beauty of holiness beginning to flow out of our souls, begin to flow out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water as the singer sang out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water rivers rivers 
So a river requires streams. And rivers that make it to the lakes, later the lakes make it to the seas. The transformation and the flow of the wonders of God will never cease. As we have received much, much we must give. So simplify the message. As your Lord enables you, simplify the message. Simplify the message so that as many will come to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Simplify the message. Simplify the message. Nothing is too hard. Let me tell you one thing as I come to an end. There is this notion that when we have money, we will command influence. The question I have is this. If money was enough, then why did Jesus have to die? There was still money on the earth. There was still gold on the earth. There was still silver on the earth. So church of Jesus Christ, wake up. We will receive resources from the Lord. And as we get resources, we will not turn our face to the resources. Because the resources also are a master. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to us. And he said to us about this matter. He said that ma you cannot serve God and you cannot serve money. In the book of, is it Matthew chapter 6 again? Yes, there about. He says that you cannot serve God and you cannot serve money. He calls money a master. It means that money has a, has a voice. The same way the Lord Jesus Christ is a, is, a, is a voice as our master. Money has a voice. When it gets to your hands, what will it start saying to you? Mammon, the worship of mammon, will keep us away from the secret place. The moment we all start concentrating on mammon, we start concentrating on mammon. The moment you are watching on the money God, then we lose the focus of the Savior. I come to tell you, if at all our denominations could have saved us, the Pharisees and the Sadducees would have done a good job. They would have covered the whole earth. Probably they would have been a third one for the Greeks and the Gentiles, who you and I have now come to. But it's because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ that we can dwell in this preservation. There is no other preservation that is there than the preservation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Silver and gold cannot be able to preserve us. <laughs> oh, glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> what a good God. Ah, I just feel the joy rushing into my spirit. I feel the joy of the Savior rushing into my spirit. Because others may want to make us believe that it is Jesus and something else. Others may want us to believe it is Jesus and going to a Bible school. Others may want us to believe it is Jesus and taking some time to fast and pray in a specific place that will lead us to the preservation of God. But I come to tell you this gospel is very simple. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I beck on the body of Christ. Kindly simplify the message. Simplify it. Simplify. It's so simple that even, you know, the other day I was in a, I was in an event and I was carrying some, I was carrying some camera equipment and things and my hands were full. And I just looked at three men that were entering the same place where I was going and I asked them if one of them could assist me. So two of them, they moved away. One of them willingly came to assist me and he carried a bag that I was carrying. So as we walked along together, I told him, you know what, you can actually be in this Christian event and you miss knowing the Savior. And I told him, you know what, I know you and I are vendors, we are working in behind the scenes. But I want you to, I want you to know this, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The man was astonished. He said, do you mean it's that simple? I said, oh yes. There is nothing else. It is in the Lord Jesus Christ that you and I have received redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We do not need to go to any special classes. We do not need to go to, a, to see a particular bishop or pastor or apostle. It's simple. It is confession with your mouth, believing with your heart. <laughs> it is a simple gospel. 
It is not stopping your drug addiction. It is not stopping that thing that you are looking and say this is so difficult pastor I've tried. It is not about your trying. It is about the faith of Abraham. Having that commitment and knowing according to Ephesians 2 verse 8. It is not by works lest anyone should boast. Verse 9. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, But it is by grace through faith that you have been saved, not of yourselves that anyone should boast. You see this? It is something so sweet and beautiful. Church, beloved, simplify, simplify. You don't need a long sermon to bring somebody to Christ. The same way Psalm 91 exists for them that make a choice of dwelling in the presence of God. I come to challenge you, beloved of God. Make a difference with this knowledge. Do not just keep it to yourself. Share it with somebody. Share it with somebody. Share it. The word of God tells us clearly that we seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto us as we work with our hands. Psalm 1917 says, May the Lord our God favor you. Bless us and favor us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. May the Lord keep us from falling. May the Lord keep us united in Him. May the Lord fill us with Himself. That we will not fall off like the, like the leaves that are burnt away easily. That we will not break off like the branch that has dried off, disconnected from the vine. But we will remain planted firmly and connected to the true vine, our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Beloved of God, as God adds us all these things, resources and things and things that can easily bring frustration and anger into our lives. One thing that I want to acknowledge is this, that the Lord preserves those who dwell in his presence. I am Malcolm David. I'm so excited this week that we begin it as the day that the Lord has made that we shall meet here on a constant, on a daily, that we shall meet here reading God's word daily, daily, daily reading God's word. And as we continue in the book four of Psalms, I trust God that this year is not ending before we finish season seven. And I want to tell you that all the seasons, God has done a particular work in our lives. Season 1 lasted from May, uh, March 1, 2020 to um, July 2020. And then we started season 2 in August and it went all the way to December. And then we started again season 3 in January. We went all the way into June around there. Then season 4 began from June all the way, then we went to season 6, season 5, what a great God. So we cannot have come to dwell in the secret place of the Lord and remain ordinary people. If it is your first time, I want to encourage you, just start where we are. The one who came at 8, the one who came at 5, they were paid one denarii. But now, as we are going close to the end of the year, we are not stopping. We are going further, further, deeper, 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 as we receive this great word. Psalm 91, a preserving prayer. Hallelujah. I cannot go away without making an invite for you to give your life to Jesus, to be born again, to rededicate your life to him, to say, Lord, I have been a dead sea. I've not been dispensing the knowledge you have given me. But today, I purpose, I choose to give my heart to you, my life to you. Hallelujah. The key verse is to share with your friends and everybody else. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. And the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And there are so many other ways that we can be able to explain. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 is also another one you can be able to see. I am Malcolm David. Let's pray this together. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, Amen. Beloved, this prayer you have made, 
you have crossed over from death to life. I also invite you into the place of partnering with this work and also giving an offering. In this way, I allow us to share in the beautiful grace the Lord gives us. And also it's a complete service. So the giving details are in the, in the, in the comments, in the, what do you call it? In the description of this video. You can WhatsApp your prayer need or you'd like to share something on plus 254-722-087-087. Yes, do not feel guilty when you are paying your, your, your tithe or when you are sharing your, your offering in those numbers because purely we are going to ensure that we keep it into the works of the Lord as he enables us. It's Mission Monday and we trust God for his direction and his leading. It's a joy. It's a privilege. 5 a.m. We are meeting every day. 5 a.m. This whole time. 91 to Nasonga. Back at Malize Book 4. So we thank God. Be here tomorrow. Time now is set. 5 a.m. Between 5 and 5.30, the live video will come up in the morning. And the prayer is still continuing between 3 and 4.40. So if you have time, you can send me a message. You'll get the link. Also, you can scroll through the page of Malcolm David and you can find the active link that is there. I am Malcolm David. Shalom. May the Lord bless your giving. May the Lord bless your shining. May the Lord bless your becoming. And may you be preserved of the Lord as you dwell in his shelter. Shalom. 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 And to our Jewish brothers, we give glory to God. And we pray that you will discover that Jesus, the Messiah, has already come in the flesh. We glorify the Lord. Shalom. Kwaheri.